Superfund and toxic waste and contamination. There's a lot of work to be done here. But all of this will help you understand this place I'm talking about tonight, this place here at Big Mountain. This is the place my people live, the Diné. You may know them as Navajo. This land is sacred ground. The people raise corn and beans and squash here. They raise their sheep here. They're intimately connected to this land. The water flows sweet and cool. And the wind blows strong and it blows life into the people. The sacred herbs grow here. Sage, juniper, blessing way, the most important, and feather way. And the herbs are collected in a sacred way, and they are used in the ceremonies of the people near the top of this mountain, big mountain. My people in the land are the same. All creatures who live here are as one. The rock nation, the winged ones, the four-legged, the things that creep and crawl, all share this land together, all together. But now, I hear tremendous sadness in the voice of my people. When a child is born here, the birth sack is placed in the ground, so that child will always remember their connection to Mother Earth. Listen, listen. I hear one of my daughters crying. In the north, a black mountain standing. In the east, a white mountain standing. In the south, a blue mountain standing. In the west, a yellow mountain standing. And a god is standing on each mountain top. In our traditional tongue, there is no word for relocation. To move away means to disappear <coughs> and to never be seen again. They want us to live the white man's ways, the white man's law. Many of our people do not even speak English. We do not go by the clock. I do not walk around all day looking at my wrist to see what time it is. I just look up at the sun. And I know when it's time to bring in the sheep, to haul the water, to bring in the wood. <clears throat> Under this Mother Earth is water, oil, coal, and uranium. They want to throw us out like trash so they can get to the earth. <laughs> I am the voice of plunder. I have many faces. 
many names. You might know me. You all know me. I'm in your history books. You've all read them. I'm in the news every, every day. I am plunder. I have many faces. I have many names. You've probably read about me. I am Arco. I am Ron Marlene. You know me, yeah. I am also Kit Carson. Did you know that in 1853, I took the Navajo on a long, long walk? 500 miles. You see, I plunder. I wanted their land. I wanted to starve them out. So I did. 8,364 Navajo people. A long walk in the winter was cold. So cold. I burned their fruit trees. I starved their livestock because I, Plunder, wanted the land. I am the voice of exploitation. I am the voice of greed. And you know me. There were pregnant women and children that I took on this very, very, very long walk. But I didn't care. And you know what I did if they could not keep up? I shot him! I'm the voice of exploitation. I am the voice of greed. And now, it's 1990. The Relocation Act has been in, has been in stock for 16 years. I will force 10,000 Navajo and Hopi off of their land because I still want the land. And if they don't give it to me, I will strip them bare. You know me, my daughter, and I know you. Your mother and your grandmother are buried here. And we are tied to each other, inextricably bound. In a promise for a good world, our cord is tight. And it is strong. And without the land, the people <coughs> will be broken. So I want you to fight, my daughter. I want you to fight and never give up. On a new land, we would not be able to do our ceremonies or gather our healing herbs. The spiritual beings don't know us there. 
And we don't know where the offering places are. On big mountains, here, for example, we give offerings to the springs. The springs raise our children and us. We think of the springs as our mothers. Our ancestors have taught us these things. Our medicine people have made offerings for us here. We cannot leave them behind. The offerings are central to our religion. We cannot leave our offering places behind. Life is a circle. Our roots go way down deep. How can you pull out someone's culture, their religion, their way of life? When you do this by trying to relocate the people, we suffer in many ways, not only physically, but mentally. stopped. What will become of our lives? I fear for my life, for my children, and for all my relations. We are bound to this land. We cannot be separated from it. We live within the four sacred mountains. Our ancestors have taught us this. Our elected officials, they do not care about our situation. I have even gone to Washington, D.C. The U.S. government is damaging the lives of our Indian people. We will keep the land our livestock, our children. I have not given up. No matter how small I am, I will fight with my fist if I have to, but I will never leave Big Mountain. Under the pretense of improving rangeland, the BIA is bulldozing sacred burial grounds. You are destroying the Mother Earth for money. This is a sacred burial ground. If I told you to take out the body of your mother and put it somewhere else, you wouldn't do it. Please, stop the bulldozing. We pray for every living being on this planet. Everything we say can be understood. And nobody listens. Navajo code talkers won World War II. And look at how we are treated now. Look, we're not the ones you need to talk to. We just work here. <laughs> we need to go to our offering sites to pray for rain. Now they have been destroyed. We can't go there anymore. We cannot do our ceremonies and practice our religion. How do you feel about this? No comment. This is a lady whose father's uncle is buried here. They asked
asked the government archaeologist if it was all right to dig, and they said okay. They never even asked the people who live here. Do you believe in the Mother Earth? I believe what I believe. have taught us that the Mother Earth is alive. She is the mother of us all. The coal is her liver. The uranium is her lungs. Nobody knows how very, very bad she is hurting now. about uh, Big Mountain, Arizona, but it could be anywhere on the planet, anywhere where indigenous people are being denied their rights to their religion, their life, their land, anywhere where the Mother Earth is being destroyed without thought for the future, <laughs> for the future generations. Um, some of you, I'm sure, have heard about and others of you who might be interested, we would like to spread the word up here. We have some handouts for you. And also just Brielves and the traditional Hopis who are united together against this relocation. There are many, many people from all over the world, from all different walks of life, from all colors who are doing what they can to help these traditional people stay on their land and to fight the multinational corporations and Public Law 93-531, which was passed by our Congress. Uh, one of the wonderful things that are happening now is the Sacred Sundance that happens every July. The Lakota Sioux people have helped bringing their ceremonies and bringing people from all over the world to give strength to the people. And through prayer and ceremony, uh, they are helping in this way. And the people are very religious and very traditional. There is a survival camp of, of children that's absolutely wonderful, where the children are taught weaving, beating, they're taught, in, taught a lot of skills. Their language, which is an extremely complicated, difficult language, is taught to them by their elders. It's in the second year of operation this summer. I worked there last summer, and there were people from all colors there helping out and doing a lot of art, pottery, uh, songs, games. It was really wonderful. And anyone who would like to get involved or help out with that, they can, there are always more people that are needed. Uh, you can cook, you can teach, you can help. There's lots of ways. Uh, the Veterans for Peace Action Team, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of these folks. They 
did a huge convoy to Nicaragua about a year and a half ago, and they were stopped at the border, the Mexican border, and they finally did make it through after an incredible amount of hassle. They are now doing an internal, in this country, caravan to Big Mountain, and they will be arriving at Big Mountain June 21st. And anyone who wants to plug in with that, we have addresses on the handout. And also, there is a weaving school where the traditional weavers are all working together in a cooperative to try and continue to do their art and to be bringing in money because the government has taken so much away from them. 90% of their livestock, their homes. And um, so all these good things are happening, all these positive ways. Your prayers are always needed, your donations. So um, we'll pass these out. Anybody who would like to take a handout or put a donation in the basket. We just started around here. And thank you very much. And if anybody's interested, I, I'm the um, coordinator for the Big Mountain Support Group in Missoula. And if you're interested in, in helping us out and spreading the word, we always need, there's two or three or four of us right now, and we need lots of help. So anybody that's interested, come see us. Can we wash the blanket, girl? We need to wash the blanket by hand. <laughs> 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 <laughs>